Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to approximate the positive root of the function f of x equals x squared minus 7 using Newton's method. And so before we start, let's write down what Newton's method is. We know that Newton's method allows us to approximate the x-intercepts of a function, which in this case was called the root of the function, and sometimes will also be called the zeros of a function. But we know that it's equal to this. If we want to find a better approximation of x, we're going to call that x sub n plus 1, that's going to be equal to x sub n, the previous approximation or guess at what the x-intercept is, minus the function evaluated at that value of x, divided by the first derivative of our function evaluated at that value of x. And so this is Newton's method right here. And so the first thing we need to do is find our first guess for the approximate value of the root of this function. And that would be our value of x sub n here. And so then notice that our problem wants us to find the positive root of our function. That means that this probably has a negative root as well, but we're only looking for the positive one. So we're looking for a positive value of x where our function crosses the x-axis, right? That is where x-intercepts occur. And so first we need to find our initial guess, our first value of x, x sub 1, right? What is that going to be equal to? And so the way I like to do it is I like to plug values into our function and see what the sign is of our result, right? Because what we want to look for is, is we want to look for an area on our function where the y value switch from being negative to positive or vice versa. Because what that means is our function crossed the x-axis somewhere, right? We had a value of y equals zero somewhere between those points. And so what we'll do is I'm going to start by plugging in one into our function. And so if we do that, I'll have f of one is equal to one squared minus seven. And that's going to be equal to one minus seven, which is equal to negative six. So we have a negative value for our function there. And so let's plug in a bigger number, let's say three, and see if we get a positive number out of this function instead of a negative number. Let's see if our function changes to having a positive y value for a greater value of x. So if I plug in three, we'll have f of three is equal to three squared minus seven, and that's equal to nine minus seven, which is equal to two. And so what we have here is a positive value for our function. Notice that at x equals one, it was negative, but at x equals three, it was positive. And so let's just pick a number between one and three to be our first guess here. That's what I'm going to do, because somewhere between one and three, our function crossed the x-axis because it went from a negative value to a positive value. Somewhere in between there, our function hit zero. And so I'm going to make our first guess 2 because 2 is between 1 and 3. And so let's erase this work here because we're no longer going to need it. All right, and so now we're ready to use Newton's method here. But before we do that, remember we need to have the first derivative in order to use this formula. So let's find a derivative of our function here. And so f prime of x is going to be equal to the derivative of x squared, which would be 2 multiplied down and then subtract 1 from your exponent. So we'll have 2x and then a derivative of negative seven is going to be zero because negative seven is a constant. And so this is our derivative in this case. And so then let's rewrite our formula here to better represent our scenario or our function and its derivative. So we'll have that x sub n plus one is equal to x sub n minus, and now let's plug in x sub n into our function and our derivative. And so if we plug x sub n into our function, we'll have x sub n squared minus seven. And then in the denominator, we'll plug x sub n into our derivative. And so we'll just have two times x sub n. And so now let's clean up our space because now this is going to be the formula that we use from here on out in this problem. All right, and so now that we have this formula or Newton's method, let's take our first guess of x1 equals two and find x sub two, which will be a better approximation. So in this case, we'll have that x sub two is going to be equal to x sub one plugged into this formula, right? If x sub two is x sub n plus one, then that n must be equal to one because one plus one is equal to two. And so that means we're gonna be plugging x sub one into each part of this function that has an x sub n. And so this will be equal to two minus two squared minus seven divided by two times two. And so if we simplify this, this will be equal to two minus four minus seven divided by four, and that's going to be equal to two minus negative three fourths, which would be equal to two plus three fourths, which in decimal form would be equal to 2.75.
And so this would be our first approximation or our value from our first iteration of using Newton's method. And so now let's find an even better approximation for the x-intercept of our function by finding a value of x sub three. So we'll have that x sub three is equal to the value of x sub two plugged into this formula. So we'll have 2.75 minus 2.75 squared minus seven, and that will be divided by two times 2.75. And then if we simplify that, this will be equal to 2.75 minus 0 0.5625 divided by 5.5. And then if we were to plug this into our calculator, which by the way, when using Newton's method, you probably wanna have a calculator nearby. It's going to make these a lot easier because you are going to be working with decimal values. And so if you were to plug this into your calculator, you would find that X sub three would approximately be equal to 2.6477. And I should have done that for our last calculation as well. This should be approximately not equal, right? Because these are approximations of what the X intercept would be for this function. And so now with x sub three here, we have an even better approximation of what the x-intercept would be for our function. And so now we could stop at any point whenever we feel like we have a good approximation of the x-intercept of our function. Most problems would tell you to stop once you find two successive values that are less than 0.001 apart or something like that. But this problem didn't really specify that. And so I'm going to do one more approximation. Let's find x sub four and see how close to our last approximation it is. And if it's close enough to 2.6477, I think I'll be satisfied with that. And we can say that we have a pretty good approximation of what our positive x-intercept would be for this function. And so let's clean up our work a little bit and let's find x sub four. All right, so to find x sub four, we're going to be using our value of x sub three, and we're going to plug it in our Newton's method formula over here. And so if we do that, if we plug x sub three into the formula, we'll have 2.6477 minus 2.6477 squared minus seven divided by two times 2.6477. And so on the top here, if you were to plug that top portion into your calculator, you would get 0 0.0104597. And then in the denominator, you would have 5.29545. I just wanna give you those values in case you're trying to track along with me in this problem and you just wanna make sure you're getting the right values. But then if you were to plug this in your calculator, you would find that X4 would approximately be equal to 2.6457. And so now compare this value of x sub four to our value of x sub three. We see we have 2.6477 and 2.6457. So those are pretty close. And I'm going to say that this is going to be a good approximation for the positive x-intercept or the positive root of our function here. And so I'm going to be satisfied with saying that this is the approximate value of that root. You could certainly keep going and find x sub five and x sub six and x sub seven and so on, but at some point the values are going to be so close to each other that you're going to have a very plausible approximation of that x-intercept. But I just decided to cut it off here because these two values are fairly close together as compared to this value in 2.75 and 2.75 and two, right? These two are pretty close together. Let's look at another example of using Newton's method. So for our next example, we wanna approximate the zero of the function using Newton's method. And our function here is f of x equals three times the square root of x minus one minus x plus two. And we wanna just perform two iterations of Newton's method here. And so once again, let's write down what Newton's method is. We have x sub n plus one is equal to x sub n minus the function evaluated at x sub n divided by the derivative of our function evaluated at x sub n. And so now we know we're going to need the derivative when we go through Newton's method. And so let's do that first this time. Let's try to find the derivative of our function. And so before we take the derivative of this function, I see we have a square root right here. So I'm gonna redefine our function a little bit so it's easier to see how we're gonna take the derivative of it. So we'll have that f of x is equal to three times x minus one quantity to the one half power, right? The one half power is the same as taking the square root of something. And then we'll subtract x and add two. And so now we can take the derivative. And so we'll have f prime of x is equal to three times the derivative of this quantity. Now we have a chain rule here because we have a quantity to a power, which means it's a composite function. And so let's go through and take the derivative of our outside function, which is the quantity to the one half power, and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside function, x minus one. So we'll multiply by one half and then subtract one from that exponent. So we'll have times one half, 
times x minus one to the negative one half power, right? One half minus one would be negative one half. And then we'll multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which the derivative of x is just one, and the derivative of negative one is zero. So we're just multiplying by one, which really doesn't change anything. So I'm not even gonna bother to write that. And then the derivative of negative x is negative one, so we'll subtract one. And then a derivative of two or positive two is going to be zero because two is a constant. And so now let's simplify this a little bit. Let's write our first derivative in a bit of a nicer format. And so we'll have that this is equal to three divided by two times the square root of x minus one minus one, right? We can move this quantity with a negative exponent to the denominator, and that will give us a positive exponent of one half, which is the same as the square root. So we just have two times the square root of x minus one. All right, and so now we have our first derivative, and so now we're ready to use Newton's method, but we still need a first guess of where we think the x-intercept will be. And so let's try plugging some values into our function to see if we can find an area where the value of the function changes from negative to positive or positive to negative, because that's where the x-intercept will be. And so to think about what would give us a nice value when plugging into this function, notice we have this square root here. I wanna be able to do this by hand. And so what are some numbers that we know the square root of? Well, I know the square root of nine is equal to three. And so in order to get nine inside this square root function, we could plug in 10, right? 10 minus one would be equal to nine. And so that would be pretty nice. And so let's plug 10 into our function here. And again, you don't have to pick the same value as me, but this is what I'm going to do to try to figure out what my first guess will be. And so if I plug in 10, we'll have f of 10 is equal to three times the square root of 10 minus one minus 10 plus two. And so that's gonna be equal to three times the square root of nine, right? So that's gonna be three and then minus 10 plus two. And so we're gonna have nine minus 10, which is negative one plus two. And so this is equal to positive one. And so now we see that when we plugged in 10, we got a positive value of one. And so now let's see what happens if we plug in a larger value of x. Let's try plugging in another value that's going to give us another easy square root to evaluate. And another square that I think we know is the square root of 16, right? Square root of 16 is four. And so let's see if we can get the square root of 16 by plugging in 17, right? 17 minus one would be equal to 16. And so that would make this square root pretty easy to evaluate. And so we'll have f of 17 is equal to three times the square root of 17 minus one minus 17 plus two. And so this is going to be equal to three times the square root of 16, right? And that'll be equal to four, so we'll multiply by four, and then minus 17 plus two will equal minus 15. And so now we have is three times four, which is 12 minus 15, and that's going to give us negative three. And so now we see that at x equals 10, we had a positive value on our function, but at x equals 17, we have a negative value. And so that means that somewhere in between 10 and 17, our function crossed the x-axis. We had a value of zero. And so now we wanna try and find that. And so let's just pick a value between 10 and 17 and use that as our first guess for Newton's method. And so I'm just gonna take these two numbers add them together and divide by two, and that will give me that my first guess will be 13.5, right? 13.5 is halfway between 10 and 17. And so now I'm gonna clean up my work a little bit here, and then we'll go through with Newton's method. All right, so now we're ready to go through with Newton's method, and we decided that our first guess, x sub one, is gonna be equal to 13.5. And so now in order to get ready to use Newton's method, let's just rewrite our formula here using the actual function in this case and the actual derivative that we found. And so if we do that, we'll have x sub n plus one is equal to x sub n minus our function with x sub n plugged in, so we're gonna have three times the square root of x sub n minus one minus x sub n plus two and that will be divided by x sub n plugged into our derivative. And so we'll have three divided by two times the square root of x sub n minus one minus one. And so now once again, let's clean up our work a little bit here because now we have a nicer formula that we can use for Newton's method here. And so let's find our first approximation of x sub two, right? We're only going to do this twice. We're gonna perform two iterations. And so finding x sub two will be our first iteration. And so to find x sub two, we'll plug x sub one into our formula here. So we'll have that x sub two is equal to 13.5 minus three times the square root of 13.5 minus one minus 13.5 plus two divided by three, divided by two times the square root of 13.5 minus one, minus one. 
And so then this would all be in parentheses in the denominator there. And I'll write that in our formula here. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. But now hopefully you see why I said you should have a calculator nearby. This is gonna be really nasty to do by hand. So hopefully you have your calculator ready and I'll give you the values that you would get on the numerator and the denominator here in case you're trying to check to make sure that you're getting the right values. Up here, you would get negative 0.893398. And in the denominator, you would get negative 0 0.575735. And of course, I rounded those off a little bit at the end. And so then if you took this value, divided by this value, and then subtracted it from 13.5, you would find that your approximation would be 11.95. And that's rounding off, of course. And so now we did one iteration of Newton's method for this function. And so now we're ready to do a second iteration. And so let's clean up our work and keep our value of x sub two that we found and find x sub three. And then that will be it for this example. All right, so now if we're gonna find x sub three, we're going to use x sub two and plug it into our formula here. And so if we did that, we'll have 11.95 minus three times the square root of 11.95 minus one minus 11.95 plus two divided by three divided by two times the square root of 11.95 minus one minus one. And so then if you were to plug this in your calculator, you took this value divided by this value and subtracted it from 11.95, you would find that X sub three is going to be approximately 11.908. And so this would be your second iteration or X sub three for this function using Newton's method, right? This is our approximation for the root or the x-intercept of our given function, all right? And so we could continue on. We could find x of four and x of five and get a better approximation for that x-intercept, but our problem here only asked us to perform two iterations. And so that's all we need to do in this case. All right, and so before we conclude this example video, I have one more quick example I wanna show you of something that can happen while using Newton's method. All right, so for our last example here, we have the function 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x minus one, and we're given an initial guess of x sub one equals one. And so I want you to watch what happens here when we use this guess for this function using Newton's method, which we have right here. And so in order to see what happens, we're gonna to need to find the derivative of our function, right? If we're going to use this formula. And so if I take the derivative of our function, we'll have f prime of x is equal to three times two and then subtract one from the exponent. So we'll have six x squared and then minus two times six, which is 12, and then subtract one from that exponent to be left with just x. And then derivative of six x is just six. So we'll have plus six and the derivative of negative one is zero because negative one is a constant. And so we have our derivative here. And so if we were to try to find x2 in this scenario, watch what happens. So we'll say that x2 is equal to one minus f of one divided by f prime of one, right? We're gonna be plugging that value of one into our function and our first derivative here. And so if we do that, this will be equal to one minus two times one cubed minus six times one squared plus six times one minus one. And then in the denominator, we'd be plugging it into our derivative. And so we'd have six times one squared minus 12 times one plus six. And so now watch what happens if we evaluate the numerator and the denominator in this case. This will be equal to one minus two minus six. And so two minus six is negative four plus positive six. So you're gonna have two and then minus one would be one. And so we're gonna have one divided by six times one squared. So we'll have six minus 12, which would be negative six plus six. Uh-oh, we got zero, right? And so we have an undefined value as part of our calculation for Newton's method. We're not gonna be able to find an approximation for x sub two. And so the whole point here, the reason why I have this example here is to show you that sometimes you can pick a bad first guess. Because what's happening here is this is actually a critical value on this function, right? The slope at x equals one is zero, right? As you just saw, we plugged one into our derivative and got zero, which means the slope at that point is zero. So just be aware that if this happens, you're going to have to pick a different first guess for x sub one. And so hopefully you can see that if this happens, don't panic, just pick a different first guess. You should be able to find another value of x that will work and won't give you zero in the denominator. All right, and so with that, that's all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.